That's his Muslim. Yeah. They told, you told him the lie. He's a liar. Tajina, Tajna, Ajina, Ajina. That's revelation. You see, you see, Muslims. What do you benefit from that? Very good in dating. Uh, Malfil, um, Malfil. To others. Umadra, like, Malfil, la, Khartou, Mutawil. This is a revelation. Like Hamid bin Khartou. 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 Hamid bin The beautiful brother, they gave him the minute name because he's a Jew, and Islam doesn't agree with the Jew. Fine, then they are descendants of, by the way, descendants of Abe. Some of them, descendants of Abe and Swain, gave them the minute name. That's since Muhammad. Our Muslims are learning the same style up to date. This is the style of the Quran. The Mecca style is completely different from the Mecca style. Why on earth? Give me the Quran. I have the Quran here. Let me see. Why on earth? If we take the Mecca surah, they are all short, and they fill a small part of the Quran, and the Madani surah are long, and they fill the biggest part of the Quran. So what, what is the point of the time? What do you It's a different style. We are talking about style. Let's see. That's especially the sword sword. Then it is sad to one shot of one of That is a point of the wrong place. You put it in the wrong place. I find a pin in the trap. I need a moment. I do not have a Don't think I didn't come out. Are you sure someone else said this? No, 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 no. no. I was joking. the camera. Repeat the camera. You see. You see. Watch the video. The camera. Camera. <laughs> Repeat the camera. Start Ma'alakat, I will go and I will uh, compete with you. Start the poetry, I will compete with you. So you know the Ma'alakat? I, yeah? I want to know how Arabic you know. No, no. Do you, you know the Ma'alakat, right? Look, 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 look. How much Arabic you know? If you know the Ma'alakat because you can compete with the Ma'alakat, Very good point for me. You know, I, I, I really appreciate speaking to someone who knows the Mu'allakat. Now, based on your knowledge of the Mu'allakat and the pre Islamic poetry, can you quote me one bait, one line where they use Al Alami? This is. No. Look, look, look. No. No, 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 good, board. good, no. Second But what's the point? Wait, wait. What's the point? I brought can you, I, I brought you, Mansur, I brought you can something I, equivalent. Look, look. I you you can, can you tell me, someone else said this? Can you tell me in the whole world, the someone I speak? else said Afghanistan, in the whole world, was there anyone said Afghanistan, but there was no No. Daniel, so what's the point? Daniel? What's the point? Are you finished? Are you finished? Carry on. Good. So now, as I was... As I was demonstrating, Maliki Yawmiddin, in any of the Arabic poetry that you have read, whether in the Mu'allakat or elsewhere, do the Arabs ever make someone Malik of Zaman? Malik of Zaman. 
يوم الدين الله سيد مالك يوم الدين in the Arab in the Arabic يوم الدين يوم الجزاء يا وين كم كم فيش كم 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 in the pre-Islamic poetry that you have read how do you come across even one line where the Arabs were even familiar of this expression this uslub this tarkib where they used this this ownership of Zaman, time, of time. Yom Adin, one particular. Excuse me. No, hear my, hear, hear no, my. your translation no, no. of the Quran is corrupt. Listen, listen, listen. This tra- no, no, don't touch me. Your translation of the Quran is corrupt translation. Yom means Yom Adin is not the time. Yom, yom is not time. Yom day. Yom, yom. Day. So, it is a, it is a wait, Hebrew wait, word. Wait, it's in my son. Wait. It is a Hebrew word. <laughs> yom Mulayla. Excuse me. When God Daniel, created, created Yom Mulayla. Relax. Okay, and I'm listen listening. to my argument. I'm listening to you. My argument but is you are this. not listening. Uh, Mansour. My argument is Mansour, you do not listen. You have not learned to listen here. I am you learn to impose you your opinion. No, I am telling you. You learn to impose your opinion. Let him finish, then you cannot disagree. My point. Tell me about this now. No, no, I haven't finished yet. My point about Maliki Yom, Maliki yes. Yom means what it was meant to be. It doesn't make sense. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What is the, in the Arabic there? In the Arabic vocabulary of the pre Islamic Arabs, did they even have a concept where you can be a Malik of Zaman, Malik of Yom, Malik of Sa'a? Never. Malik. What does it mean? So, what does it mean? So, what, what's what the point? I'll, I'll tell you. What is the point? What, what does it mean? I am going supreme. to tell you then. Compared compare to the Torah, goodness me, the Tanakh. Let me tell you. You see the eloquence. Have you read Psalm 150? See the eloquence there. Have you read it in the Hebrew language? Now you're going have to. Have you read Psalm 150? Excuse me. Uh, Daniel, 119 Daniel. in Hebrew language. What see was my point? Uh, what was my point of Maliki Yomi? Yeah, is this, which you're not letting me finish. Okay. Quran, is, Quran is using this uslub this stylistics that Quran is bringing in which it is defying the conventional use of the language of the Arabs at that time. The Arabs at that time were not familiar as far as the evidence is at hand with us that they can even tell that anyone can be the owner, the master, the king of time, the king of a day, owner of a day, owner of a minute, owner of an hour. Allah is saying he is the owner of the Yawm al Qiyamah, the day of judgment. He is the master of it. So, this kind of expression the Quran is using, the Arabs were totally unfamiliar with in their stylistics, in their vocabulary, in their normal convention of language. So, the Quranic language is such that it is bringing things like this. And it's asking people, if you don't accept this is from the Quran, to be surat in min mitli. So he says, Maliki yom itim, then this is what? Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka na'sta'in. Right? No, 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 I'm not going to finish with this. I'm going to start. What do you mean you are not going to finish? Whole chapter, I'm going to finish. No, we have to finish something. Whole chapter. We have to finish something and move on. No, wait. No. Because this, no, no, what you are saying, I am going to demonstrate as, to as you. I mentioned, did anyone before me Daniel, wrote this uh, Daniel, phrase, Daniel, Afghanistan, Baghdad, Taki, Nuhat? Did anyone else? Listen, just tell me. Hmm? If you haven't, this is a miracle. This is wonderful. This is eloquent. It has the con- content. Wait, wait, I know what wait, the content is. You try for a second understand my argument, my point. When the Quran says, غير المغضوب ولا الضالين Don't miss the Quran. Don't miss the Quran. I am going you a tarkeet. Of course. غير المغضوب عليه ولا الضالين But when the Quran uses غير of something and ولا غير and لا In the Arabic language that you have learned Right? The Arabic language of the pre-Islamic poets. Do you find they're using khair and la in the tarkeet? Ever? Even once? Well, it is me. The Quran. Excuse me, I asked you a specific less. question. Listen, bringing something not anyone else brought. 
without really much depth of meaning. It doesn't make sense. I will tell you the depth I of meaning you, in a second. I tell you, Mansoor, I tell you, I First, brought you, I brought you a phrase. You can not uh, can you interpret am, my phrase? No, can you I tell? Am, can you tell someone else? Can you tell listen, your Quran brought this phrase? Listen, tell me, tell me. I want, a, I want a clarification. No, Mansoor. Write it down for me. Read your Quran. Write it down for me. No, Afghanistan, but I've taken. I want you to write it down for me. I will tell you what I have written down. No, no, that particular I will tell phrase. You. Is this the Quran? What? Are these verses from the Quran? You read Arabic. Go ahead, you tell me. Okay. Ashar sifat mushtarak bayin Allah wa shaytan fil Quran. Ten characteristics shared between Allah and the, and the shaytan. When we Quran. are discussing about Come on. the no, I, yeah, Quranic I, because, nature of the because, challenge, because, because you are now saying... Because Mansoor, because Mansoor, you are moving shame. so much. What a shame. So much. What a shame. A shame. An opportunity for a Christian to Arab to, to have to a discussion on the nature of the challenge of the Quran. And Allah he misleed, Satan misleed. Subhanallah, you are Subhanallah. What a misleading So I asked him, I asked you, I the expression Khayyid. Are, are these part of the Quran or not? Are these verses in the Quran or not? Are these verses in the Quran? The lying spirit, our Hashem put the lying spirit in, amongst them, Allah is in the Bible. Which, which ayah is this referring to? You, you will listen to it. Which you read it. Which you read it. Okay, let me read it. Read it. Okay. Come on. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Now, let's... No, you what? don't take it. I'm not taking it. But you don't I want to talk about this. Okay, finish. Good, good. good. But so, quickly, Mansoor, because you talk, 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 talk. Oh, very quickly then. Yes. And you can answer very quickly? Okay, just tell me And you can answer this. very quickly? Yes. Good. Which Arabic poet said, Ghair and La in the Targib? Say no one. That's right. So, that, of course it makes sense. The Quran, clearly it makes sense very clearly here. Are you saying, I don't understand what it means? Even as a non-Arab, I know what it means here. Not of their ways, not of their ways. Even in English, I told you what it means. So now, as you realize, the Quran is using stylistics that the Arabs were unfamiliar with because this is not of their convention. So when the Quran says, Bauti, listen, listen, listen. You ask me to do it quickly, so don't interrupt. So when the Quran says, to be a surah and misli, they were unable to bring something like it because this is totally new to them. That's why they are at a shock. Muslim abroad, they killed 20,000 people of Muslim in a time. Come on, Abu Bakr, 20,000 people of Muslim. Muslim had the Quran. And so let's go to this. Now, let's come to this. Okay, okay come let's to come this. to this. Okay. Tell me, how is this like the Quran? Which stylistics is it following? Give me an example well, of the Tarkeen. Well, it is rhyming. Not rhyming. And there I'm, is content. I'm not clear. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I am not interested. I am not interested in two. Simple. Listen, you Daniel. You don't accept it fine. Listen. That's, I gave you simple answer. You, you did not accept it fine. You did not hear you the nature of the on. challenge, did you? you? Don't move on. My That's challenge cool. was... I am bringing about Usloob. Which Usloob of the Quran is this like? It is not the Usloob. Then there you go, it there fails. It's rhyming. Oh, thank there you. It's rhyming. Oh, you all admission there it fails. contents better than the Quran. Listen. There is rhyming. There failure. is contents better failure. than the Quran. You, Listen. according to your own admission. There's no point. That's it. Come on. this to me. Near this to me. Take a photo of it. Is it rhyme? Is it eloquence? Is it contents? And of course, is it meaning or not? He didn't answer any of these questions. Because he knows he doesn't understand the challenge very well. He doesn't understand challenge at all. So I started by saying, okay, let us talk about the Islamic poetry that you are so familiar with. So he's familiar with the Islamic poetry because he quoted some of those poems and their poetry. So I told him, which of those poems demonstrated a stylistic pattern or uslub, or we call or asalib? This is part of your linguistics, the feature of language, which the Quran is using and sharing from them. Because the challenge of the Quran is to something like it. So that means it has its own asali, own stylistics. So I gave him an example from Surah Al-Fatiha. Of course, he interrupted every single time I was about to offer him the specific stylistics embedded within the ayah. 
Which of the pre Islamic poets ever talked about that they have a concept of Lord of all the world in plural, Alam and Alameen? Because this is totally new to the Arabic vocabulary brought by the Quran. Quran brought them this concept to them in their vocabulary. They didn't have it. We have no evidence so far in the hundreds and thousands of poetry that is has survived. I gave an example of Maliki Yawmiddin, where Allah is saying he is the owner, the master, the king of a day, a day of judgment, the day of recompense. The Arabs in their vocabulary at the time and before had no such concept that you can be an owner or a king or a master of time, like an hour or a minute or a day or a month or a year. Non-existence. It is totally impossible for them to have constructed anything which they don't have in their vocabulary, in their conventional language. So when the Quran came and said, bring something like it, how are they going to bring something like it? Because Quran is bringing something new totally, but conceptually it is understood. They understood what it means, Maliki or Medin, oh, he now, he owns, he's the master, he's the king. So in that day, no one is going to be able to talk, able to say anything. He is the one who's going to judge. He is the one who's going to dispense justice. They understood what it meant. So it introduced deep meaning, depth of meaning. Let alone the eloquence, which I'm not even talking about, what everyone knows. But our Christian friends don't see the eloquence. So blind. They use the Quran as an example of eloquence in their studies in the universities, in their schools. And yet, such a hatred and bigotry prevents them from admitting and going to a denial saying Quran has no content, no meaning, no eloquence. So I gave another example of the Fatiha. In fact, every single ayah of this surah has this stylistic feature which are unique and the Arabs didn't even have any of these features. That's why they were in a shock. That's why one of the poets, when he heard and he went back, Utbah bin Rabia, if I remember his name correctly. And they asked him, what did he say? He couldn't remember anything, only about the last few words, about the Sayha. You know, this thing, the, the, the thunder, the, the voice um, that is going to befall the Adil Thamud. So, what was it in this chapters of the Quran, Mecca and Medina? Throughout, it is this new language. And yet, within the Arabic letters, within the Arabic alphabet, the Quran introduced this new challenge to them, bring something like it. So when I said, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَرَضَّانِينَ Quran uses a construct, غَيْرِ and لَا. The Arabs don't use this at all. They say, غَيْرُ وَغَيْرِ or لَا and لَا. They say, لَا هَذَا وَلَا هَذَا. غَيْرُ هَذَا وَغَيْرُ هَذَا. They don't mix these two, غَيْرِ and لَا. But the Quran uses them and it's no less than any, any, any beautiful eloquence. So these kind of stylistic creatures totally numb and silent and incapacitated the Arabs of the day of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And this is just one of the big surah. Whether you speak about surah Ikhlas, as you were saying, or Quraysh or others, every single surah we can demonstrate how these new linguistic features exceed the number of words that are within the surah itself. So if a surah has 28 words, for example, the linguistic, new linguistic features will exceed 28 words, maybe 32 or 38 or more and so more. <laughs> Every single surah. This has been objectively demonstrated by scholars. A particular scholar by the name Bassam Sa'i in his book called Mu'jiza. So I ask those who are Arabic speaking, speak Arabic, please go and read this book and see for yourself how objectively this is laid out. You have three genres of literature. The pre-Islamic poetry, Quran, and Hadith of Rasulullah How the Quran is so unique compared to the other. When we compare the Quran with the Hadith of Rasulullah still, you can see the difference. 
and studies have been done objectively, academic studies, by Dr. Ibrahim Awad, if, I, if I'm pronouncing his name properly. And he says a book like this, Quran, uh, hadith, Muqarana Uslubiya. And if you read, you will see how he is taking several concepts in everyday language. Language about, say, clothing, the words that are used for clothing, the words that are used for food and drinks, the words that are used in your um, warfare and battles, the words that are used in economics and so on and so forth, and how the Quranic words and the words that are used in the Hadith, they do not match. So you may have like 1% or 0% occurrence in the Hadith and the Quran has them all. Or Hadith has them and Quran has 0% of them. It's like this is a work of two different individuals. So when scholars of literature, when they examine these two pieces of work, they are certain objectively that the Hadith of Rasulullah as documented, as transmitted, and the Quran, they cannot be from one person. Because totally different style. This is how even in other literature, in New Testament studies, whether this is a workshop form, the apostle or not, they can tell you this is the style of form. That's not. This is how people can compare styles and say, oh, this is the style of his writing. So when you read Shakespeare, you'll say, oh, that's the Shakespeare's style of Shakespeare. So st studies have been done objectively also. Muqarara, comparison between the Hadith and the Quran. That's one. And what I was alluding to earlier, the Quran, the Hadith, and the pre-Islamic poetry. Clearly demonstrating, without a shadow of doubt, for those who use their mind, the reason and the intellect, that the Quran is not a human speech. Cannot be a human speech. In fact, when the Quran challenges them to bring something like it, we now understand why they were incapable of doing that. Now we understand why they were incapacitated, why they were unable, why they were totally silenced by the Quran. So any attempt by people saying, look, this is the rhyming. What are the challenges not about rhyme? Rhyming can be a byproduct of a feature in literature because rhyming is part of eloquence. But this is not the objective challenge of the Quran. The Quran doesn't say, bring a better rhymed verse, I like it. It says, فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ And each surah is unique. It has a hallmark. The way the, the surah talks about, unique. So even if you were to compare two similar sounding surahs and you compare them, Surah Al-Shams, Surah Al-Layl, you might think they are very similar, but you will see how 80% or so are unique to each of the individual surahs themselves. So, in summary then, what I would like everyone to go and research further is to understand the challenge of the Qur'an that the Qur'an has placed to mankind who disbelieve in it, the nature of the challenge. And go and study it, research it, and then you can be able to, you will be able to take forward to the non-Muslims and share with them this unique challenge which totally stops people from imitating it and demonstrating that this is nothing but the words of Allah. The example I often like to quote in summary, well I don't quote in summary but I like to quote now in summary. Quran came in a language, the language of the Arabs, in their own vocabulary. Alif ba ta ta. The Quran even uses the huruf al muqatta'at in many of the surahs. Alif la mi. Three letters. Alif la mi. Or others. Ha mi. It's showing, demonstrating to them. Same Arabic letters are used to compose the Qur'an, to bring the Qur'an to you from Allah, the revelation. And yet you're unable to sing it. Why? Because these letters of your language have been used, but they've been delivered in such a way that you can be certain. That is why at that time, when the challenge was there, they decided instead to fight him in battle, let alone bring a chapter. He could have just said, there you go, here is my poetry. The best way it comes along. 
Here's my poetry. And another poet comes along and says, my poetry is good as well. Here is a chapter like the Quran. Did they do that? Everyone failed. In fact, they didn't even attempt, many of them. Because they realized, they said, have a kalam al-bashar. This is not a statement of faith. So, the way the Quran brought this is like, suppose now, there's a building, right? I'm an architect. And I say, look, I have just built a building over there. You will be unable to build something like it, similar to it. And then all the architects say, come on, I know where you study. I know which engineering university or polytechnic you've been to. We know the same thing. We know the trade. And say, okay, fine. My building is made up the same bricks of your building. Same bricks. But look at that. Look at my building. Look at it closely. Every single brick from every other brick is floating. None of them are touching each other. No brick is touching another brick. Every part of the structure, all of the walls, the sides, the front, the top, is like this. Each brick is floating. So the connection is like not like this, one touching the other in cement and so on. They're floating each other from each other. Bring something like it. Do you think any architect today, 2017, June, would be able to bring a building like mine? Impossible. No trade in engineering, in architecture, civil engineering or otherwise, would be able to bring a building where all the bricks are totally separate from each other and floating, as we, so to speak. Impossible. So when the Quran brings like this chapters, this is how unique it brings, even though they're composed of letters and words and sentences, as people understand. And yet, when it's asked of them bring something like it, they know it is important for them. So I leave this thought with you to reflect on the nature of the challenge of the Quran and in the future, God willing, inshallah, when we have an opportunity to speak with knowledgeable non-Muslims who are Arabs, who have learned Arabic, then it will be a very fruitful discussion to even demonstrate further rather than giving you a lecture on the challenge of the Quran. Because when we have someone who can understand and appreciate from a different faith group, this is when we can make our point clearer. <laughs>